Hey, this is Nate Wells. And this is Drew Cove. Check out our podcast, that Go for Hockey podcast, for uh, the latest news and updates on University of Minnesota Hockey. You can find us on uh, iTunes, and we're also on the uh, Zone Coverage Podcast Network. That's elite. The Zone Coverage Podcast Network. They may be drinkers, Robin, but they're also human beings. Hell yeah, let's get Stinko. Giles and the Goalie Podcast, take two. <laughs> John Bonus with the save. John Bonus literally with the hot save. He oh. is more efficient right now as a closer than Fernando Rodney. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I am your host, Giles Farrell. Uh, we have a, what did I say, well-lit and well-attended yes. Giles and the Goalie Podcast. Yes. Uh, across from me, as always, is Ben Remington. Hello. Uh, I got next to me Nate Wells. Hello. Nate, was there anything in the news about Gopher Hockey recently? We should. They're talk waiting. About? They're waiting for that Saturday midnight news yeah. dump. Yeah. yeah, that's what it is. That's, uh, they're. It's very well known the Saturday midnight news dump. After Nate Wells is on a podcast. Yeah. After after it's he records flaw. the Gopher Hockey yes. podcast, yes, exactly. which you heard the promo for to lead in this podcast. Sure. As Tom says, that's elite. <laughs> that is elite. Uh, that is the voice of Tom Schreier, who is trying to produce this otherwise fine production. <laughs> I was an otherwise fine producer to yes. start Ho- this podcast. Hopefully everything is plugged into what it needs to be plugged in. Uh, if not, we will probably record for 90 minutes for no reason. <laughs> Which we've done many times. Yeah. I've, so I've been on a couple of those. That's yeah. par for the course on this podcast. Actually. And now that John's not here to save us, it's uh, we don't know what's happening. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, He's going to get a beer. To be unplugged. We're, <laughs> uh, we're off the rails. John goes to get a beer. Panic ensues. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and then across from me is an uh, old friend from Hoggy Wilderness, Joe Bully. I don't Hi. know why I said old friend again. Well, yeah. Yeah. Keep uh, calling him old. That's me. Yeah. yeah. It, He's not that old. This is now my second time on this podcast. (laughs) An old friend. (laughs) Anyone's an old friend. You were on once before, so that automatically makes you an old friend. Sure. Sorry, I I had to sip my beer. Yes, and John Bonus and the voice of reason are in attendance. We have a whole end of table of girlfriends and friends. Yeah. So this is well attended. We had a good turnout here at uh, Tin Whiskers. Thank you to them for hosting us. Uh, here on Saturday night as we record, we are recording post-game of the Minnesota Wild Dallas Stars production. I think John tried to give someone a free beer. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah, you'll be back. Yeah. We'll always be back. <laughs> I was surprised Giles didn't bite on that. Oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> John's getting feisty. <laughs> is he getting God's feisty speed. or is he getting frisky? Yes, yes. Either way, Godspeed to the voice of reason. Yes, yeah, so uh, we'll try to keep it plugged in as best as, as possible. They, as they depart this otherwise fine podcast, we hope this doesn't truly fall off the rails now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. All right, we're going to quickly try to recap the week for the Minnesota Wild before we dive into some topics. Uh, first of which came a Tuesday night. Minnesota Wild lose to Nash Vegas. No. That's where, we, no. That's, that's where we lost it the first time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's a terrible good, nickname. It's a good leaving point. Yeah, Smashville's fine. Music, Music City. City. Music City's fine. I made a joke about the Vegas Twitter account in there yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Uh, uh, anyway, Wild losing a shootout two to one in a game that they were relatively lethargic for for a good fifty minutes of the hockey game, and yep. Yep. losing in a shootout. I mean. Can't really take much away from a shootout loss because it's a shootout and it's going to be irrelevant in a week. But right. uh, any any hot Miku Koivu takes for not going <laughs> to the forehand backhand. I think at this point you just kind of have to be happy the Wild didn't lose in overtime. <laughs> like that's the victory years that the Wild managed to stave off the Predators for five minutes of but three they on did. three. They overtime. almost no, won. Well, no, that's that's <laughs> true. That, no, you're right. You're right. They didn't. They they did on a technicality. They they Granlin, actually staved them off. Granlin so. rang the pipe in overtime. That, he that beat true. Rene. That yep. too. Yep. 
So yeah, they did score in overtime. Ellis scored in overtime, it and was, it was taken it was back. Twenty by seconds in, one of yeah. those toenail <laughs> offside calls. Yeah, but which, whatever it I is, what it is, know. you know. They would have gotten the overtime point anyway, so who cares? It was yeah. a huge point. Yeah, yeah. big yeah. point. Humongous big point. Humongous big. <laughs> and then to follow <laughs> that up, Wild begin a back-to-back, or home-and-home, home, I should say, against sure. the Dallas Stars. Uh, at home, they smoke the Dallas Stars 5-2 to two in a loss that pretty much crippled any chance the Dallas Stars had to climb their way back into the playoff picture. It was already really grim, but... Right. Uh, you got to be pleased that Wild really put their foot on the gas in this hockey game, and especially after they fell behind. Then they had that huge kill, as Bruce Boudreaux said, post game. Uh, they had a, a four minute double minor after yeah. they were down one nothing, and Granlin comes up the ice and snipes a shorthanded goal, and it really turned around after that. Uh, and then to end the week, Wild lose in Dallas. What was it, four to one? Four to one tonight. Four to one with an empty netter. Yeah, I'm a blogger, folks. I don't watch that game. <laughs> <laughs> Blog boy. <laughs> well, I, you watched the game with me, which means they lost. Because, yeah, uh, that's true. I don't. Have we ever actually watched a game together with a Wild of one? I don't no. think we have. I don't think we have. Either. It's only been a couple of games, to be fair. It's like it's like five it's or six. But yeah, it's, it's a couple. Yeah, it's, it's a not, handful. It's not, doing and good. it's not well. Yeah. No. Well, you you picked a Wild game in Dallas, and those yeah. just never yeah. end well. Nah, anyways. That's true. Yeah. yeah. So Wells has to hide for the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. No, just no viewing parties. I, yeah. I came here, I was going to say, I've done a couple of the playoff ones, and one we did uh, at another place, and it was they lost uh, to Chicago. Yeah. Um, and, yep. we, and we did the one last year here where yep. they, they lost the one, Blues. It was one of the, yeah. uh, the ones the Blues won. And then there was the initial Wild the, Extra Party where they yeah. blew a four-goal lead or three-goal yeah, lead. Is, yeah, this is, the, this is the one that got the ball rolling was – the Wild Extra slash Vikings Journal launch party. That's true. Rest yeah. in peace. Yeah. <laughs> RIP to both websites, yeah. yes. The uh, the Wild were playing the New York Rangers that night, and they got up like, it was like 3 1, 4. I would think it was 4 1, actually. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're up 4 1. That Eric Hall left the game. He got a concussion. Mm-hmm. He got decked yeah, by he got somebody. Destroyed. And he, he was not the same the rest of the season. No. Right, that, right, right. And that was right on the heels of getting dinged in the jaw by Malkin in the World Championships. Yep. But, yeah, Nate showed up. He biked to, I forget what it's <laughs> yeah. called. In Poor Bloomington. Richardson. Poor, Poor Richardson. Richardson. Wait, Bloomington. Wait, yeah. Nate Wells biked from God wow. knows where. He shows up, <laughs> and then the wheels completely Were fall off. Were you doping? <laughs> no. Tour de Nate. <laughs> yes. That was when, uh, tour, that tour was when the Darcy Kempire strike back, right? Yeah, that yeah. was. Uh, it was 2014, and Darcy Kemper no. was shaky at best. It was a cold and, and long <laughs> winter. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's fair. Uh, yeah, no, it, it, was, it was one of those games where, yeah, where uh, Eric Halla gets injured or whatever, they leave, and then, yeah, the game's completely turned yeah, around. Yeah, was, right, pretty much. And then John Moore got suspended, because I remember right about that's that. That's right. I couldn't <laughs> think of the guy's name. It was John Moore. Just uh, Oh, yeah, he was a cheap shot artist. Yeah. Yeah. So that that is the week in review. Minnesota Wild coming out of the week. They're at... 96 points, holders of third in the Central Division and pretty firmly in third in the Central Division, looking yeah. more and more like they are going to play the Winnipeg Jets <sighs> in the first round of the playoffs. Ben sighs heavily in the microphone. Yeah. Ben, it's not like you're a beat writer and have to go to uh, Winnipeg. As no, 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 no. I'm saying this purely from a st- fan standpoint because we had friend of the show, uh, Art Lippo, a St. Louis Blues writer, ask us, hey, would you like the Blues to pass the Wild in the standings so that you end up facing Vegas yes. instead of Winnipeg. And me and Giles said 11 times out of 10, mm-hmm. yes, please, we would rather face Vegas than Winnipeg at this point. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that still rings true, and so that's why, like, this game happens tonight. And I'm not upset at all. Like, a, a, as a Wild fan, yeah, bring it on. Like, I, I, I would, I desperately want to get in that Pacific bracket, bracket. Maybe I'll come to regret that statement at some point, but I'm pretty sure I would much rather be in the Pacific bracket at this point, then either facing Winnipeg and then Nashville. Like, I just, I'll take my chances with Vegas. You know, we they're in a great season. I'm not doubting them as being a legitimate good team. I think they are, but I'll, I'll definitely take them over Winnipeg. And then in the second round, you've got the Sharks or the Kings. Like, yeah, I'm taking that every day. I mean, even though the Wild do have some moderate success against Nashville, I'll take it. Like, I'll take them in the Pacific bracket. So... I don't know. I, I don't know that the uh, the the fighting yos are gonna 
They're not. Fight their way into third place they in the division. Need, but, uh, as we record, they need to win just to get within two points of the wild. But they are getting smoked by the Arizona Coyotes 4 oh nothing. Oh, my God. Uh, actually, it's 5 nothing with a Goligoski going. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, man. Oh, it's getting better. Ah. It's getting better. Mike, yo, come on. Do something to help this He's, he's trying to swoon upwards. <laughs> he's yeah. always got to find a way to stick it to the wild. <laughs> he had a swoon, and now he's fighting his way out of it to get back into the playoffs. And it's just it's, it's the classic Mike, yo, story. He yeah. swooned himself out of the playoffs and then had to fight himself into the playoffs by winning every game to finish the season, and that's where he's at right now, fighting off the avalanche. Somebody tweeted this a while ago. This is years ago. I can't remember who for the life of me, so I apologize. But they said, and I quote, nobody knows how to pull his nuts out of the fire like Mike Yo. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I remember that, yeah. No, I, what about the rest of the table? How do we feel about an inevitable Winnipeg matchup in the first well, round? I got a question. Does does their lack of play- postseason experience... That's a at great all, question. that rings guys, in there. I thought about that. Maybe in a that maybe you yeah, know the, yeah. the the Winnipeg Jets for years and years were terrible at taking penalties. Dustin Bufflin was the biggest buffoon. Like he he was the guy that would uh, he would take at least a penalty and a half per game. You know, right? And, and always at the worst worst time. This year the Jets have taken less penalties, and that's probably why they're a lot better too. But do you think maybe they, they they're, with everything amping up in the playoffs, they and the emotions ramping up, they get careless and reckless, and maybe maybe the Wild can. Exp- I feel like refs swallow the whistle a little bit more in the yeah, playoffs. They do. Too. I, I think the other thing is you always have advantage when you're at home, and I don't think refs obviously are conscious of that. I think this has been studies have been done that the home ice advantage really is that you get the calls, because refs kind of naturally don't want to go against the crowd, and so I think the hardest thing there is you really have to win. Game three and four at the X. If you're no. if you're playing that series, I think no. you lose the first two just in that building. So I keep thinking about this because everyone seems to just point at the second round and say Nashville and Winnipeg are destined to play each other. And <laughs> yeah, I, I flash back to last year <laughs> yeah. where everyone was pointing at Minnesota, Chicago, destined to be in the second round. Neither one of those teams won in the first round. Sure. But we're talking about a Winnipeg Jets team who has yet to win a playoff game in their franchise history. Yeah. And that dates to the Thrashers. Yeah. The Thrashers were swept. I, I'm, not, I'm not as worried about that because the Winnipeg, they did have a playoff series a couple years ago against Bruce Boudreaux's Anaheim Ducks. And they played them tough. Didn't they? they did. Yeah. And oh, yeah, it, it was, was funny because it was actually a great four games. That was, yeah, that every was, game went against yeah, the Jets. That was yeah. the best four game sweep I've <laughs> ever seen. <laughs> like, and, and I'm not like that's that's no, a weird that's, hyperbole. So that's gonna be the wild this year. But it was You're the saying be- they can have a solid <laughs> they can be swept in a solid four games. Yeah. <laughs> but like the Jets put up the best fight of any team I've ever seen getting swept in four games. And the White like, was, was cool. remark yeah, it yeah. was remarkable how they fought at Anaheim tooth and nail, and I think it was three out of four games went to overtime or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think you're right. And it yeah. just Anaheim won every time, and it was just it, but so I think there's enough players on that team that are also on this team. They've been there before. They've experienced the whiteout. They've experienced the playoffs. I don't. I'm, I'm not worried about this franchise not having won a playoff series because all those guys or most of those guys have been there now. What do you think of the home ice advantage? Because whenever they play at the X, you know, all those guys know you can drive seven hours down. It's a 15,000 seat arena, right? Most right. of those guys can't get in. Do you worry that the Wilds' home ice advantage is in some way? Tom. Compromise. <laughs> no, so, I'm sorry, Fox Sports North. Yeah. I don't know <laughs> if you <laughs> listen, yeah. but the Minnesota Wild are a great home team. <laughs> I, <laughs> I know, so, so I know no many people that. love to hit the mute button on the old FSN when the, the game comes on. As but well, they should. The Minnesota Wild are a really good home team. Really good home team. You need to hear it. Yeah, I, I worry about it because, you know, we talked about this, how, how the Wild are not good on the road this season, and it's because matchups are a lot harder, and this team isn't as deep as it was last season. So that definitely plays a factor. Oh, you're saying Nick Winnipeg. Sealer isn't a, isn't a great player. It's not Nick Sealer. It's more the forward lines, really. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, with Suter's injury, who knows? We'll get to that. But uh, it's the forward lines. Like, you know, you've got, you know, a potential to have Marcus Fleno out there trying to stop Patrick Line. Yeah. Good luck. Like, yeah, good yeah. luck, you know. So that that's that's that would be my concern. 
I, I think the first two games in Winnipeg are going to be demoralizing. I think if they go up there and play, I think it's going to be a loud crowd. I think those guys are kind of ready to prove something. I think the Wild, they're not a great playoff team. And that could be like a 4-0, 4-0. You come back to St. Paul and you're like, you got to win game three. I mean, I just I don't see a win. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. I think it's a 4-5 game series. I, I actually game. think any playoff series, no matter who they're playing for the Wild, they're going to win on home ice. It's going to be a home ice advantage throughout the post for throughout that series the wild might take care of home ice so it could be but it's gonna it's gonna be like a a game seven and it's gonna have to steal it and i don't think the wild can i still think that they could take care of business at home ice though let's go to this like the the wild don't have a (laughs) proven that was a great perm that's good really deep yeah um i'm I'm, I'm hoping it's still plugged in otherwise it's gonna sound fade ten Um, whispers but uh I, I think the issue with the Wild is some of those young guys have not stepped up. You know, Zucker can disappear. The Grandlands can disappear. I, I mean, does that concern I, – I understand the home ice, and I know Fox Sports North likes to drub it into our heads <laughs> that they're, they're a great home ice team. But, I mean, who is – I mean, do you see one of those guys stepping up, or does that concern you when you know that a team like Winnipeg has the firepower to score? And probably would score in the X, too, in, here in St. Paul. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that Winnipeg just has too much firepower deep. I mean, they like they, they if if they assemble the the lines in a certain way, they can roll three lines deep with more scoring talent than the Wild can put on any one given line. I mean, you're banking Eric Stahl. Being, is there Stahl like, here? Oh uh, yeah, but like you know, he matches up with Shifley. But then what? You know, then you've got Blake Wheeler. Then you've got Patrick Laine. Then you've got you know Nikolai Ehlers. Ehlers, yeah. I mean, you've I, mean got, I, I think your you logic, know. Joe, is like I understand where you're coming from on that. I'm just literally looking at the talent on the ice, and I'm like, oh, you yeah. can't, you can't win those games. It's two not going to be easy. Yeah. But the Wild well, have always played their best game in front of their home crowd. Yeah, yeah. And and you can hide some of those bottom six players a hell of a lot better than they can when they're yeah. on the road. Yep. They'll that, get exposed fair. like hell. <laughs> up at MTS Center. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think on home ice, it's going to be way more competitive. And I really do think that they could uh, pull it out on home ice. And barring the whole FSN thing that you guys talk about week after week after week. Yeah, we really, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if we've taken great, great offense to that for some I mean, I, I don't know. That's kind of my style. but We really drive it into the we ground. We do, we do. But, but there is something to it with, with being able to find matchups and – and I do think that, you know, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be an easy feat at all. But um, I think Boudreaux has, has been a lot better at hiding some of those depth players uh, away from some of those t- uh, tougher lines from the opponent, who, even against some of the better teams in this league. Who, who are the go-to players in the playoffs then for you? Is it, is it Stahl? Is it, does it Zucker step up? I mean, who, who do you think is most likely to be kind of the guy if you, it's an upset in my mind to, to pull off the upset. Well, I like the way Parisi's trending. Yeah. He's, scoring he's 10 not. goals now yeah, since true. his return. Yep. Uh, I think I saw a stat tweeted out earlier today by uh, my cohort, Tony Abbott, um, basically saying that if this was an 82-game season, he'd be right around 26 goals this season, which... Really good pace. Yeah, that's pretty solid. That's, that's not, not, not bad, bad. considering not bad. where... He's kind of been at, but he, he had so, leg pain because of back injury, which is concerning. Right. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. right. Yeah. Um, so Prezi has got to be your your big knocker in the playoffs. Eric Stahl has got to be your big knocker. Uh, Granlin has been trending up uh, since really kind of being a mess in the last like two weeks or so. It's got to be those guys. Matt Cullen is. This is why you sign Matt Cullen. To lock He's someone down. To to be a huge defensive yeah. uh, forward. He's the guy that's got to come through, I think, in the postseason as well. That's, that's why you signed him. And, uh, you know, Daniel Winnick is a guy that's had postseason su- uh, success um, and, and play, and I, I think he's a guy that you're going to have to rely upon to really up, up their game. And I don't think they're going to be scorers by any means. they got to hold their fort, though. In the series against Winnipeg, Charlie Coyle is a player for me that really stands yes. out as he has to get going and yeah. do something. and especially for as physical as the Jets like to play it against yeah. the Wild at times. Uh, you need Coyle to kind of grind it out in front of the net and get some some greasy goals, if you will. Mm-hmm. And so that's that's kind of what I'm watching outside of the, you know, your big names, your Stahl, Zuckers, Granlins, and, and then obviously, as Ben mentioned, the, the bottom six depth. And that's where Coyle comes into play for me because <laughs> he gets kind of shuffled around the lineup. And, you know, right now he's on line three, if you will, with – Greenway and Cullen. So, well, and Greenway could be huge too for the same exact reasons. 
And you also have to consider, too, like, <laughs> you got to keep Granlin from getting basically his existence wiped off the face of the earth by Dustin Bufflin on a nightly basis oh, because yeah. that seems to happen every time the Jets play the Wild. I don't know how it, had, it works one, out. He had one game where Grant ended up getting hurt where, like, I swear Bufflin just <laughs> yeah. picked him up, threw him against yeah, the Yeah, Bufflin is just like, 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 every time Bufflin and Grantland are on the ice together, it's like a professional wrestling yeah. match. It's like, like watching it just, Brad May body slam Kim Janssen in the 07 <laughs> yeah, playoffs. It just, it's like... <laughs> What just happened? How did anybody allow this to happen? Andre the Giant choke slamming. <laughs> yeah, Hulk exactly. Hogan. It's just like what? <laughs> what the hell? Like poor Granlin, you know, you, you get the, like this little man syndrome off of him. Like he gets, he gets thrown around like he's Ray Mysterio. Yeah, exactly. Right? exactly. We're also forgetting about Nino Niederreiter too. He's a guy True. that really needs to pick it up, um, which is tough with the injury. Yeah. He's, he's, he's been injured most of the season, and uh, he was a guy that I think he he's disappointed by not reaching thirty goals. Yeah. I think he was pegged by all of us to have a real breakout year. And yeah. Injuries have derailed him, and, and now that he's starting to move away from, from the time that he was actually injured, yeah. he's got to he's got to perform in the postseason. And then I think his play has picked up here in the last bit, yeah. month or so, and definitely better than what it was coming out of the injury. But uh, speaking of injuries, God, I'm getting good at those segues. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's baby. Just that's killing cool. it. It's that duff nice. beer in your system. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ryan Suter leaves the game. A Saturday night against Dallas with a quote unquote lower body injury <laughs> after video replay showed his right foot goes very awkwardly into the board. Right. Uh, Bruce Boudreau said there'd be no update until Monday. Uh, but obviously, Ryan Suter, a guy who you've kind of taken and seen some like weird, weird hits or you know, whatnot in the, the years he's been with the Wild, and he's just kind of shaking it off, and yeah. on he goes. A, him not coming back seems to be kind of a giant red flag. Yeah, I mean, that, that's scary. The one positive, and I, I mentioned this on a couple of shows ago, of Spurgeon getting hurt was that I hope that it shows Bruce Boudreau the light of having Ryan Murphy over Nate Prosser. Not that Nate Prosser's been horrible, but I think that you've got more to gain with Ryan Murphy. But you got a situation where you have to play both of them. You know, where Matt Dumba's your top line right, right side defenseman, which is fine, you know, I wrote an article this week about how that's fine. Um, but then you've got... <laughs> <laughs> is that all that article's about? That's, that's basically what that article said. You yeah. certainly wrote that article. Yeah, I certainly wrote that article. So, But then you've got Ryan Murphy and Nate Prosser as your second and third pair defenders on the right side. It's like, you know, for a lot of NHL teams, that's probably good enough. But, you know, that's a lot of NHL teams that maybe have a little bit more talent up front, maybe have a better goaltender, et cetera, et cetera. That's not good enough for this wild team. Like they they rely on their defensemen. They rely on guys like Jared Spurgeon, and you know, I mean, you, you you're you're kind of pushing your luck. Where you know, Spurgeon is very iffy to come back right at the start of the playoffs, and then if you're without Suter, you know, you've got Brodine, Sealer, and maybe Olafson. He was hurt in the Olsen last game. Olafson is out with a concussion. Right. So who knows when he'll come back? So. You know Carson Susi come on down, uh, <laughs> and then that's what you're looking at. Like and that, that's that, that, that's getting thin, very thin at the defensive position, and that could be. You know Tony Abbott actually tweeted about tonight that the Stars could have knocked the Wild out of the playoffs with taking out Suter tonight, and it's maybe a little bit of hyperbole, but also <laughs> also could be very correct. Is that is that the home and home thing? They're like, you knock us out, <laughs> we'll get you too. <laughs> yeah, it's payback. Uh, in, yeah, and it wasn't Roussel either. Yeah, I was say, that, yeah that no kidding. Uh, Roussel right. in that charge. Good uh, God! Hey. You want to make a wild fan cringe? Just tell him Matt Dumba is the top on the depth chart of <laughs> Minnesota Wild defenseman right now. God forbid we put one of the highest scoring defensemen in the league on your top pair. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a serious thing. I mean, Nick Sealer is now elevated. Yeah. Nate Prosser was on the power play tonight. <laughs> 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 I mean. Uh, I mean, oh, that wasn't his, that wasn't the goal in the beginning of the season. Was right. no, <laughs> so, no, I don't I think mean, so. You, no. you talk about Minnesota relying on their defensemen for defense. Yeah, they've been one of the top teams this season for points by a defenseman yeah. too. Yep. yep, they rely on their defensemen for offense <laughs> yeah. as well. And when you've got Olafson, Spurgeon, and Suter, guys that skate, guys that contribute. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could talk about Suter being like the king of of second assists or whatnot, but. He makes a lot of the time. He, he is the catalyst of getting the puck up ice, well, and it's huge. Yeah, when I was doing that research for the Dumba thing, Suter actually, you, you would think that he gets fat, you know, that these 51 points have all come from second assists on the power play. 
But, you know, to, in fairness, he's actually gotten a fair amount of primary assists, um, you know, on the power play and on even strength. So, I mean, Giles has, has kind of championed Suter having a phenomenal year all his season, and uh, he really has had a great year defensively and offensively historically. It's it's real. I mean, you. I don't think you can undersell how big that loss would be for this team. Yeah, that's also someone you have to replace all those minutes. Where <laughs> right, it's a lot that's of minutes. That's a lot of minutes. To spread it's a lot it. of minutes. They're soft minutes, okay? They're soft <laughs> minutes. He just cruises <laughs> around on the ice when he's out there. Yeah, he's you're, just... you're, you're basically you're basically without a you're a top pairing, and you have to go then put out uh, yeah all those. So minutes. so is the storyline if this team gets swept? Like, let's say they play Winnipeg in the first round and just get their heads beat in. Do they say, well, you lost Spurgeon and Suter? Or does Boudreaux, do people point the figure at him? Do they blame Dumba because it's Dumba? I mean, who, <laughs> who, in all seriousness, what what is the storyline? I don't know that you can predict it ahead of time because there's so many different things that can happen. Dubnik could, yeah. I'm exactly. Serious, I mean, yeah. we didn't even talk about that when we talked about the forward matchups. Devin Dubnik and Connor Hellebuck are going to decide that series. I'm sorry. It's, yeah. it's NHL playoff hockey. Jake Allen stole a series. Right. right. Yeah. Like, Famous Connor Hellebuck right. and Devin Dubnik are going to decide that series. That's That's... I mean, Alpha Omega, sure. that's that's playoff hockey. So, uh, you know, I, I think that's, you know, maybe it's a little who, bit different. Who you, who, if you're you, missing Spurgeon and Suter, I definitely think there's a story there where, yeah, you don't stay do a chance. Do you believe Dubnik can do that? Do you think Dubnik can carry you through a series? Uh, like I think that? he can. We certainly haven't seen it yet. It, it, it's something you're asking I think he's a capable lot of, of that. You'd be asking a lot of any goalie. Dude. Oh he, yeah, he yeah. has to know it's coming though. If you if you're down all these defensemen, right? He has to in some way sure. know it's kind of on him. Fair or unfair? Yeah, that, that, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, for sure. Oh. Something I kind of point out week after week because we haven't really seen Devin Duvnik catch fire no. and go on one of those insane runs yet no. this year. Every season he's been good for a, like a month or six weeks of just unreal hockey. Yeah, and we haven't seen it yet this year, and that doesn't mean it's going to happen, <laughs> but it's possible. It would be something if it's in the first round. Of the <laughs> yeah, playoffs. that would be great. Yeah. And look at Jake Allen. Look at Pekka Rinne last year. Had a phenomenal yeah. playoff series. Yeah. Pekka Rinne had been nobody for seasons. Yeah. And had a great playoffs all the way through. And then now is carrying it on. He's having a Vesna campaign. Yeah. You know, you know, Spurgeon was said to uh, start skating, I think, sometime next yeah. week. I still don't think he's going to be back by the first round. I mean, you're still asking him to be game shape and ready to go. Yeah. And first round, I mean, depending on how long that first round gets stretched out, yeah. Uh, Dubnik has got to be the oh. key to that first round matchup, regardless if they play Vegas or if they're playing Winnipeg yeah. or, or whomever. Yeah, so, yeah fair. Uh, reading the notes. Uh, any any hot Roussel takes before we. Uh, <laughs> Antoine Roussel? Yeah. Uh, not, he's a f head. That's, that's my <laughs> hot take on him. <laughs> Have fun All editing right. that. Yeah, uh, I, think, I think. Uh, I think they should have finished the job on him as far as the four-minute major where he bled. I mean, just why stop there? Just take his head off. Just, just Daniel so. Winnick, just do us all a favor yeah. and just, just end him. Winnick, and yeah. Winnick just didn't, didn't, didn't get the job done. That's all there is to it. Oh. What a – I don't even know what the word I'm looking for is. But <laughs> he gives Winnick just incredible cross-checks to the kidneys. Oh, God. And then Winnick finally gets – Angry back, and he just turtles up. What a knob! Yeah. I'm not gonna go as far as you did. There's <laughs> well, only so much editing you I'm, can do. Yeah, I'm he gonna, hasn't scored since what July, uh, January yeah. or something oh, like that. Yeah, screw that guy. I just I said that on the post game recap. I was like, why? Why is he still in the league? What yeah. good does he bring to the Ken Dallas Hitchcock. Stars? And shame on Hitch for throwing him out there after oh, a while. Put yeah. the empty net goal. Oh yeah, that was a. That's a Bush move on Hitch. Yeah, he, Hitch yeah. knows he's getting I'm, fired. He's I'm like, I'll go down. I generally like Hitch. <laughs> that, is, that, that is, though, a move that you pull when you are going to play the team the next, again. Yeah, 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 yeah. You no, know, I think that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. That, like that, that's a move They knew they were playing him again. Yeah. Exactly. That's a move yeah. you see a lot in playoff series. Yeah. Yep. yep. Where yep. It's, that's fair. Where it's, you uh, got us this game, Russell but we're show up in a Jets jersey, and we're like, wait, wait, whoa, whoa, what's going on? By God, that's Russell's music. Which team is he? Oh, no. Except Roussel's the guy that bring the uh, the folding chair. Oh God, yeah, no, he's coming down the aisle with a chair every time. He's uh, he's got the barbed wire baseball bat. He's got every. He's got the whole shopping cart. I'm, I'm glad that like 
like the only like my only rest re uh, wrestling references come from like ninety five <laughs> to like two thousand. That's all you whatever. need. Yeah. That's all so you I'm need. I'm glad we're on the same exact. It was page the here. it was the prime yeah. time the Attitude Era. It was that's all you need. I, had that, I got that in like a lot of like WCW. During the time <laughs> of course, like, yeah. all you need. Well, it kind of reminds me of when uh, Janssen <laughs> got sucker punched by Brad May, and Lemare just stared at Bru uh, Bugard. To just, yeah. He just skated around the bench, <laughs> and apparently that was like the shit. You know, or yeah. you know what I mean. Right, that, right, was, right. that was the key to that series. <laughs> and then they ended up losing to the Ducks. Jacques Lemaire yeah. back in the news this week. Yeah. At uh, Pioneer Press. Brian Murphy caught up with him, and he's looking just fine down there in Florida. Oh, yeah. What a, he's just what as a, boring what as ever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, relatively speaking. Uh, uh, but, um, I don't know. Any any other wild things on our minds here is I is it incredible that a team that is playoff bound that has expectations around it like we search for things to say about them I mean it just I, I'm sorry <laughs> to be that guy but like they're not exciting I think they're a first or second round playoff team at best they don't have an exciting I mean I Stahl's had a great year but yeah. we have to look at his age and just reasonably what what he can do here going forward they don't have a really young exciting young player that everyone's Tom, they have one. Yeah. He's just over in Russia. Yeah, yes. that's right. He's uh, he's held hostage by Putin. Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty much. <laughs> I, I like I, I like Tom how you just went like. There's really nothing to talk about, but here's Eric Stahl. I'm going to talk about him for a minute. <laughs> well, yeah, sorry. We do that. We do that every week. I'm like, okay, yeah, let's try uh, to find something that's not Eric Stahl to talk about. Well, we still much. talk about Eric. And, Stahl. and I'm not. I don't want to take away from the season he's had. It's just you have to be reasonable about what a player that age can offer you. You know, want well, a player of that skill level too. Like, it's not, yeah. like, it's not like he's a. Tarasenko, a McDavid, a yeah, McKinnon. Yeah. Like right. he's 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 done very well for himself, being in the yeah. right spot at the right time, and pulling off the shots that he's pulled off. But I mean, let's be honest, he's not one of the most electrifying players in the NHL. No, like, he was he's one not of that the guy. greatest contracts. Yeah, he, well, yeah, that that yeah. too. But he's just not that guy. He's not creating yeah. his own shot every time he scores. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. <laughs> I thought it was funny you mentioned Kirill Kaprizov and. And Nate's searching for the last drop of his <laughs> pint glass because uh, <laughs> you know just drink it, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He can't. Uh, yeah, you can't drink enough in the gut situation. Um, other news of the week. I, I didn't note this. I just remembered it now. But Jordan Greenway oh, made yeah, his yeah. NHL debut that. on that was, uh, Tuesday against sure. the. Is that bad? The Purds. Yeah, the Purds. But, uh, it, it seems like last last bit. week I watched. I was watching him play boss for Boston University. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. It's come a long way. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's come a long way in seven days. What, what are your foremost, like, what are the positives you see? What do you think he can actually bring to the team? And what are your concerns in, in terms of he is being dropped right into a crucial time of the season, and they're going to ask a lot of him given the forward depth? Yeah, I, I think that I think the positives for him is that there's upside there, and we haven't seen it out of him yet, obviously. But but he has the size, right? Right. I mean, like, like I've said I've said here tonight and i said on online a couple of times, at worst, he's Marcus Foligno. At worst. Oh, so you think I mean, he's worth a four-year deal? Yeah. <laughs> oh <my> God, don't. <laughs> Dude, me starting that contract. Uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah. At the very, at the very worst, he's 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 dragging his stick behind him as he skates. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he doesn't even need a hockey stick on the ice, basically. At worst, and at best, he's Marcus Foligno, but he actually has some scoring upside. We saw him. At, at BU actually have some touch, actually have some scoring he, upside. He some I don't know that he's going to show it right now. It's going to take, you know, Joe talked a little bit about, season. yeah, about him taking a little while to adjust at every yeah. level he's played at, but we'll right. see it eventually. I mean, right now he's basically, he's played, what, three games? I don't think he's had yeah. a single practice because they've been no, out there. Right. Really right. right. Yeah. Uh, so just, yeah, pretty much any, at this point, anything you get from him is almost just gravy. Like, oh, God, nothing, yeah. Like, it, it, you're basically just throwing. You're like, you're a good player. Just play with our team. You have no, you have no clue really what's <laughs> really. The Wild would yeah. be willing to do that with any yeah. defenseman that's around. Like, <laughs> if you see a, you know, yeah, a guy in the street. It, yeah. it, it is Minnesota. You can't walk two blocks. Dead serious. Eric Reitz. Yeah. Eric Reitz is like walking in that parking <laughs> lot. We can go get him if you want. <laughs> we can go get him. He's over. There. Clayton you Stoner. I think I see Clayton Stoner. Why are you? He's hunting all, bears. Why are you all on the Eric Reitz train today? <laughs> <laughs> that's just Tom. I think just Tom is on the Eric Reitz. Tom just like running down like before coming over. He's like. 
I was just trying to think of random defensemen that the Wild have employed and given ice time to. I don't know if they can have a defenseman on call that that was an accountant, but right. they might be yeah. able to find one that's like a bank teller or something. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe a Perry Mutual at Canterbury Park. Somebody, I don't know. <laughs> Somebody's a financial. R- 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 Riles works yeah, at U.S. Bank. I think oh. you probably could do that. Rustle up a guy. Why not? <laughs> well, we've hit Riles, so it's. Uh, <laughs> Cross that off your bingo it's card. Out of a, yeah. It's out of control <laughs> that, now. That's on the yeah. zone coverage bingo card. That's not even yeah, the Giles and the goalie yeah, bingo card. Right. I'm bringing it here. Yeah. <laughs> our, our bingo card has Tom bringing up your podcast. Yeah. Okay. I, no, I, I, I do promote this podcast. That's on scary. The, he yeah. does. He yeah. does. And then I have to be like, Tom, people don't know that's who, a, these, who the, like, Giles are. Like, yeah, that's yeah. after harassing a 20-year-old. Yeah. Which is yeah. Right. Not, yeah. not great. It's after yeah, you I, ride I, Drew I sat in on that podcast. Good Lord, Tom. You just... <laughs> Because he, sh- he showed up in a Mercedes Benz. Like, I was like, that's the nicest car to drive to Cumulus in the last 20 years. <laughs> Outside of Tommy B, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right, right. He gets dropped off. Yeah, he, in yeah, a Mercedes. he gets dropped. Yeah, he takes a Mercedes Uber, <laughs> that's how. <laughs> it's the Uber XXXL. Yeah. Doesn't run into people. Yeah, right. it's great. It's this Uber bunny sign that's on <laughs> It's not an XL. So, uh,. I guess with the Suter injury, anybody particular from Iowa that's left jumps out to you as who you should call up um, as a friend of the podcast and a fellow Hockey Wilderness writer, uh, Brandon Slyke, tweets out uh, options from the left side include uh, Carson Soucy, Victor Louv, and Zach Palmquist, former uh, Minnesota State yeah. Maverick. I think any one of them could get the call. I think Soucy has been – I think he had a good camp, and a lot of people were kind of maybe thinking he could – Spent some time in St. Paul this year, but that hasn't happened yet. So, you know, Susie's the guy, you know, especially with Olofsson out with a concussion right now, I, I would expect that to be the move. But Louv could be too. Uh, he was just acquired. They must like him if they traded uh, Mario Lucia for him, which doesn't actually add up necessarily that they like him. But, uh, yeah, I think Susie's probably the guy. Conspiracy theory. Bob Botsko. Sorry. He Go knew... <laughs> Somebody put a hit out on Suter, so they traded for Victor Lou. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It, go, it goes all the way back to Mario Lucia one yeah. now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I still like the idea of calling Victor Lou Spoony Lou. Uh, just nobody's going to get to that Crank Anchors reference, but I still like it, and I'm still going to stand by it. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad you appreciate so, that. I, boy, I don't know. I I think we kind of hit all the, the wild-related topics here. I, I tried to jot some notes here before we, we jumped on, but I wasn't that's as That's all uh, we really got. That's yeah. all we really need. So, um, all right. I guess we can uh, quickly looking at the week ahead, the final week of the regular season for the Minnesota Wild. It's finally here. <laughs> I, <laughs> right? I can't believe it. It just feels like yeah. yesterday we were here at this point last year recording no, at Tin Whiskers. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, okay, two days ago. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they return home for the home finale against the Edmonton Oilers. Oof. And then they hit the road for three games as they go out to California. Uh, they play the Ducks, the Kings, and the Sharks. So that's a, that's a treacherous that's a, that's a end reason. to the season, yeah. uh, which you know is obviously may still play a role in where the Wild finish if they have a pretty terrible week. The Wild could, in theory, maybe slip down, but... Can, like can said, we go this direction? It seems like we focused on that Winnipeg series. Are you guys certain that they beat Vegas in the first round if that's the matchup? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I would say it's a given, but it's the, their best bet. because they didn't sweep them this year. Vegas, yeah. They do, swept Vegas. Do you Vegas have the reverse home ice deal? Because it seemed like there was a lot of wild fans in Vegas. When uh, they had I don't know that I don't plays know into it as so much. so many are going to travel that thing. time, but because it, it was the only game they played in but Vegas But why wouldn't you go to a playoff game in Vegas knowing there's two? Like, why wouldn't you make a vacation out of that? Plus you, have, plus, you have resident. Well, you're, all, you're also you're also doing it on a week's notice. If that at this right. point, right? It's tough. It's a little bit more expensive. It, it's uh, it's Vegas. It's Vegas. And that's and true. I mean, it's playoffs. Oh, yeah, you could stay at yeah. you could stay at Excalibur also, for like a hundred dollars. Yeah, for I, a I, week. I believe Vegas is also doing one of those things like uh, like how Nashville or some other southern cities yeah. do, where they call they it the make, Knights Vow. Yeah, where they make it very difficult for uh, visiting fans. And basically, so season it. ticket holders get the tickets at a lower price. With the inability to resell them on online, you know, yeah. mediums or whatever, it's, it, you cannot transfer them via online uh, if you get them at this lower price. So, so you're banking then on some of those people that were there anyways, probably are Minnesotans that lived in Vegas. Oh, I mean, certainly. Had to no, be a I think they'll, they'll still sell a certain amount of tickets outwardly yeah. anyway. But yeah, 
there should be more of a partisan Vegas crowd in the playoffs, given that they're doing this. Mm. And if it goes more than four games, then again, you're just on a one game, one day right. notice, and basically. That, yeah, right, right. yeah, it's tough to fair. pull off. Yeah. But I think the team matchup is better. I don't, I I don't think the home yeah. thing really measures into it all that much. As, as, I mean, the, the Vegas played here twice. And I mean, you the also Wild mentioned the floor Winnipeg's lack of experience. I mean, that's a team that was cobbled together this <clears> year. <throat> that, you know, I mean, that has yeah. to be a factor to it. You sure. know, like, could they have been trying yeah. a hot streak? And, yeah. Yeah. Still comes down to goaltending, too. Mark Andre Fleury has been very historically hot and cold in the playoffs. Yeah. I mean, you know, that guy is, has carried teams, and that guy has so single-handedly sunk the, teams. Jake Allen, basically. Yeah, he yeah. could he, uh, yeah, either way. Yep. That Western swing, though, is going to be going to be tough because y- y- you hope that the Wild were able to, to clinch a playoff berth, mm-hmm. at least going into this Edmonton <laughs> game. <laughs> you, uh, they won't be able to, like, mathematically no, clinch they it. Won't, but, but But you were I mean, hoping that they would have with a win <laughs> right. tonight yeah. against the Stars, yeah, but... Yeah. And with the Ducks, Kings, and Sharks all jockeying for position, yep. I think the only one that you might have a chance with is the Sharks if they're, they they're still fighting for the division up, crown. But, but yeah, really, yeah, I mean, yeah. they're those all those teams are desperate, still trying to fight yep. to get in. So that's not going to be easy. And and if the and if the Wild don't have anything locked up, it's going to be it's going to be crazy. And the California swing has been notably not kind to the Wild as well. So I mean, usually we think about it starting the season where they have like three games in 14 days or something I, stupid I, I like mean, that, but the, the best they part, haven't done well in California. In terms of accumulating points, that's an issue. I always feel like these teams, the narrative comes in, oh, they lost four games going into the playoffs, and then it doesn't matter. They start no, over you're, new, whatever. No, yeah. that's fair. Yeah. But just you know, in, in, the, in the positioning kind of thing, you know, yeah. where they'll, which bracket they'll end up in, basically the Central right, versus right. the Pacific. All right, moving on to the Bruce Boudreaux quote of the week. Hi, this is Bruce Boudreaux. I don't see how in Toronto that they're calling it unless it's a guy they just pulled in off the street that hasn't seen hockey before if i were the fans i'd be i'd be booing even more because that you know they pay good money for this if you want it don't just think you want it go out and f-ing want it gonna be a ryan Suter themed bruce Boudreaux quote of the week as he it, he kind of had a not great week for sound bites unless i i really <laughs> missed one but okay. Um, just commenting on the, the Suter injury tonight, uh, he says, if you're not good enough to overcome it, uh, then you shouldn't be in the playoffs in the first place. Obviously, uh, kind of giving a, a shot on the arm to the team, saying they're still good, but, uh, man, losing uh, Ryan Suter, as we discussed, uh, for any significant amount of time here is is bad. <coughs> so, yeah. Bruce knows. I don't know. If you get Bruce off the record, he might say something uh, <laughs> right. different that might uh, echo that of his uh, infamous. He's like, guys, I actually meant we're not a playoff team. <laughs> <laughs> his infamous winter classic uh, 24-7 <laughs> rant. Yeah. So, uh, uh, I, don't, yeah. I don't really know what he can say in that situation. Yeah. He's, he's. I mean, there's four games to go. This team is... Depth deprived. You know, they're, they're, yeah. there's going to be scratch in the bottom of the barrel in Iowa yeah. for yeah. for depth uh, on the on the left side for defensemen, mm-hmm. and he can't lose his team right now. He's got to say something positive. So I, I don't know really what you can really expect from him, no, other than coach speed basically yeah. is what we got from oh, him. Yeah. Yep. Off the record, he's probably going to tell you something. You got to be bleeping me. My <laughs> luck in the playoffs will not will not ever change. And I'm relying on Devin S- Bleep and Dubnik. Sad too. but true. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. We could sit here and we can write a small novel on Bruce Boudreaux's playoff luck. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We'll save that for next week. <laughs> Our playoff show. <laughs> right. Uh, all right. Uh, well, they seem to be closing the bar, so we should probably wrap this up uh, relatively quick here. Sure. So let us close out with jerseys. Sure. Here to start the third period, what team is this? It's not Team USA. Well, yes, it is. They've got on new uniforms. They're wearing the logo of the duck. I've never seen this before. Because we have the uh, Sharks this week, oh. we are going to look at what a San Jose Sharks third jersey might look like. Mm. Right now they've got just their uh, their teal uh, home jerseys with the, the black and gold trim and then they mm. got the whites with virtually the opposite of what the teals are. And It's safe to say they're probably going to go back to black 
back yeah. in black. Yep. And is that? Does anyone have any other outwardly <laughs> ideas? <laughs> that, like, that's what they're gonna do. Like yeah. the unfort- I would love to see them again, as we've said every week this this season. I'd love to see them go back to something original, something like their inaugural jerseys or something like that. Yeah. They I think did. they're very good. And they with the shark fin and the right, right, water. right. Yeah. Well, they and they they have. I think there was some news story where they trademarked again, or there was a hint that they were going to come back to the shark fin shoulder patch logo. Yeah, that's I guess what I was getting at. Yeah. Um, so that might appear in the third jersey next year, but the so, primary so logo would be probably the same as it is, or as Giles mentioned as well, uh, I believe it was on Twitter where they have. The shoulder patch they have now, which is like the SJ with the sharks, yeah. they might use that as a primary oh, jersey. The, yeah. The main, no. Yeah, so, 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 Bay Area so, guy, yeah. let's get your input. So my question, first of all, it's one of the few teams to actually pull off teal that looks decent. True. Right? Kind Very of true. like a relic of the 90s. Right. Um, I do like kind of those gray set jerseys with the blue, but it's probably not too different enough from their current yeah. jerseys. My question is, remind me, do they have the full shark now, or is it just the triangle with the thing biting the stick? Like no, it's this is the triangle. Because yeah. I did an updated like, updated version of the yeah. inaugural logo. Yeah. So I, I like the I like the idea where w- they went to the black jerseys with a full shark body. Do you remember that? Yes. And they had that on I do there. Know what you're talking about. I, it's a subtle difference, but I think it's something that yeah at least it's worth the third jersey. It's better than the SJ, and then maybe yeah. use the shoulder patch with the shark the fin, fin in the water. Yep. Um, yep. Kind of a callback to their uh, original jerseys. Yeah, so. I would like that. I would want you to see it. Golden Seals jersey. What about that? Just like throw a complete <laughs> wrench into it. Go green. <laughs> What uh, what Bully franchi- wants it. Bully wants it. <laughs> what Bully, uh, comment on what it. What franchise does uh, owns that? Is that the? Well, the technically Dallas that's Stars? the Stars because no, they yeah. I think, I think it. technically it might be the Sharks because. Uh, oh, you. Yeah, yeah, the North, North Stars. Yeah. No, we talked about this with Drew. Yeah. Yeah, because because uh, um, when, when the Sharks started up, the, uh, the 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 North Stars owner basically kind of sold out because. Right. Weird, weird long store, and they had like the a guns? dispersal. They had a yeah. dispersal was, draft. No, yeah. That was such the a weird owner. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, but they yeah. but the they guns. Were, but, but, yeah, right, but they're the North right, Stars right, owner. Right. So, so they had this like weird dispersal draft uh, right after. So, where they raped the North Stars? Yeah, where, yeah, yeah, where yep, they basically yep. just yeah killed the uh, killed the North Stars. Uh, <laughs> so, so outside of haters like Bully, seriously, what, would you give them any? <laughs> would you give them any props for just going white skates? Green jerseys, oh golden seal no. in the middle. No, I no? think it would be interesting. But I Boldness? think this like, fortune favors the bold. Tom wants white gloves too. <laughs> yeah. I, I think Vegas has looked good white with the sticks. white gloves, only with the white jerseys. I think that's the important distinction sure, to make. Sure. I like it with the white jerseys. I'm still. I think con- it would look awful with dark. Jerseys. I'm still convinced the Vegas Golden Knights are a team you created in NHL '98, and they just like, <laughs> ripped them off. That's I'm true. Dead serious. Yeah. yeah. So, I, yeah. I actually saw. I was working in San Jose earlier this year, as you know, and and I actually saw they had. Some guy, a guy, a manager that was with my company who was a big hockey fan actually had some like Golden Seals memorabilia. Oh, that's like, they, awesome! Like the Sharks actually gave out some stuff and like he had yeah. some like I was I've like seen a pennant I was before. surprised. Yeah, it's I was not surprised a great logo. to see it. It literally looks no, like he no, took a seal and beat it against like a target. <laughs> it's the dumbest logo I've it's ever. Like clubbing heard. baby seals joke in there somewhere. <laughs> Basically, Pier Thirty Nine, then right? Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you just you just clubbing baby seals. That's it's it's, it's quite an awful symbol, but. Oh. No, I think they go with. I think they go predictable. I think they go with something with. I got Wells Lab. A, a logo week. they've already used. You know, they're not going to go with something wild and crazy yeah, like. They're, they're, I, it's going to be a sharp, black. I like, I like the shark body. body idea. I, know you're, black you're, I like the black jerseys. What if you go? Gray? It works for them. Yeah. What if you go gray like the Timberwolves? Just have a. Gray no, <laughs> yeah, I'm not big on those. <laughs> Don't get me started I'm on kidding, that they're atrocity. Not they're not good. Giles, I want to know. Tibbs out of here, by the way. What a joke. Ice, ice, ice. He's he's a hockey coach actually, but uh, seriously, before I leave, what what would you do if you were in charge of the Wolves jerseys? What would you uh, change? You, I, you have to use the KG first era two. only. No no no. So you have to use the first two because they're kind of committed to that right now. What would you do with the other alternates? I mean, I would have done something probably similar to their like blacks from the the KG era. I would have probably okay. taken a different spin with it, but yeah. I would have tried a black. A, I don't know, like the gray city jerseys are just no, they're bland. Terrible. Like the yeah, entire bad. the what entire about? overhaul of the Timberwolves was just so bad. They're a fresca can, yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't think their their primaries are that bad. I I'd be no, interested to see okay. Don't compliment <laughs> it. <laughs> I'd be interested to see them using fresca. the the royal blue, the lighter shade of blue yeah, that they yeah. use now. I think the the reason why they didn't go with the black is because that shade of navy they use is so dark. It is. It looks it is. black. Like I it turned is. on the first game to see the wolves. I'm like, did I not get a memo here? Like the wolves are wearing black, and everyone's like, no, it's blue. And I'm like, yeah, I'm watching it on TV, and it's black. And they're yeah. like, 
yeah, they're really dark. Navy That's blue. just the FSN white balance. <laughs> yeah, which is not good. Uh, you know what? I don't get, and, and you know, we we obviously are hockey fans, and so the hockey crests and logos are always displayed on the front of the jersey. Yeah, sure. What's up with basketball jerseys and not no, using I think that, the logo on the front? I think that's a really good because, like, Toon Squad, famously, right, and yeah. uh, and Space Jam, they had the <laughs> hater. You're a hater. Hate. I'm not well, hating at all. I well, think it's you're hilarious. a hater. I love Space you Jam. You know, you know the fictional team from the 1995 movie Space Jam. <laughs> <laughs> Let's cite them when making NBA jersey decisions in 2018. You guys we gotta go haters. with the 1995 although, although, Looney Tunes I will, team. I will give Tom credit because he might be the first person to ever, to ever uh, actually point out and give props to a mid 90s jersey as like a good example. Because <laughs> normally true. we're talking about like a, like a 95, 96 Gordon jersey Fisher. or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're like, oh, what were they thinking? Yeah. The Detroit Pistons 90s. Yeah. Uh, oh, God, oh, the man. horse. <laughs> the Grant the teal Hill. horse, God. the teal flaming horse. Grant Hill had to wear that. that yeah, poor bastard. So I, it, yeah. yeah. Oh, God. wolf. Uh, right. So anyways, what about the Lightner area? You wouldn't do anything with that? Uh, Those wolves jerseys? Like, I'm not surprised with what they they changed to this summer, that they went with uh, the, the green. Yeah. Which uh, I, I don't even hate the green. I think I it's that's that's probably the, garden, that's probably the best look, which isn't saying a whole lot about the lot. But <laughs> I don't know. Like the wolves can hire me, and I will completely overhaul We've been, their yeah, stuff in the right. right. Someone hire us. Someone needs to hire us as Jersey consultants. Why wouldn't they just put the circle logo on front though? That's, that's no, a good I mean, point. I, I agree. I mean, if they're going to make a big deal yeah. about it, hey, we got a new logo, which is basically you know yeah the, the Coyotes uh, logo, the Coyotes yeah, logo. Yeah. I All mean, right, at least display it. Tom's uh, Tom's reverted into yesterday mode where he's going on uh, the Wolves Wired podcast. Yeah, so we, better, yeah. we better we better uh, we better wrap this up here uh, before we go. Nate uh, Bob Motzko, new Gophers coach. Yes, yes he is. Uh, any any initial thoughts, or would you like to preview the next Gopher podcast? <laughs> Um, I'm I'm a fan of the hire. I always liked Bob Motzko as a uh, as a coach up at St. Cloud. He did a great job turning around that program. Uh, it's it's always a tough job to take to become a Minnesota. There's a lot of expectations, uh, fair or not. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of pressure. It's I mean, is he physically in. able to coach the team yeah. if he's not a Gopher alum? Like, is he yes. like? I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's allowed. It's possible. That's a really weird question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I mean, is he allowed behind the boards? Like, do, do, they, can he, do they allow him on the ice? But he's from Minnesota, <laughs> right? And it's wanted all to play, and wanted to play for it's the all Gophers. That that's all that matters. That's all. It's Lucia. Yeah. That's all. Yeah, that they, they, yeah, they kind of made a big deal out of like stories that you didn't really, never really kind of came up until uh, he became the Gopher coach. Of oh yeah, yeah, yeah I, I tried to play there twice. And yeah. I mean, I mean, and like those are things. That, those are things that actually happen or whatever. But when you're when you're Saint Cloud coach, that doesn't you don't. Yeah, talk you don't about bring that. Much. You don't bring that stuff. Up. You, you start talking about how you. you yeah, I'm here because this is my Kurt second Brooks. choice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Really yeah. want the Gophers uh, job. But no, but right. I, I think it also it, it says a lot about uh, the Minnesota job and where everything is that uh, you can get a guy like uh, Coach Mosco to come in uh, and leave his alma mater and leave a job yeah. that he's been a program that he's turned around and was there for 13 and years. He's been there for 13 years. And as, uh, the last three, like three of the last four seasons has had, uh, St. Cloud be one of the top uh, teams in the nation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and to take the Minnesota job still shows that it's still one of the, uh, the crown jewels of college hockey. Yeah, true. Does Mary Uchi roll over in his grave though? If Motsko mm -hmm. wins a national championship and he put on the mural, Oh, I mean, uh, he already, already had Lucia already has two. Lucia won so. two, and so. it is, it's, 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 it's three M Arena, anyways. Yeah, it's three M Arena. Do you think the paper cares? The paper doesn't care. No, no. post-it notes, they're fine. Right, All right. sandpaper, whatever. Nate, uh, anything else you uh, you want to plug before we uh, we depart here? Uh, Frozen Four is this week. We'll have a, a lot of coverage on that. Uh, it's uh, I. Have a couple Three CCHA teams, and one WCHA team. Is that right? <laughs> yes, yes. Exactly uh, I crushed Nate's soul. <laughs> <laughs> I watched it. Just, it's like it's like the scene from The Simpsons. Here, Lise, if you watch in slow motion, you can pinpoint the exact moment his heart rips in half. <laughs> No, well, this is. I do I have to do my own. I have to do my own podcast and like just be like, it's all, and just tell Tom to shut up on this one. Like, you have to do a second one during a week. Oh God! Uh, I have right. better things to do in my time. But no, it's um. But so there's a lot of friends for stuff. Uh, I host a weekly podcast called uh, Go for Hockey Podcast. You can uh, with the uh, Drew Cove, who is the uh, beat writer for the Minnesota Daily. Uh, we discuss college hockey and specifically uh, gopher hockey on a weekly basis. We have usually have a guest every other episode uh, throughout college hockey, which has been great. 
Uh, you can read my writing mostly on The Athletic. Oh, God. And a few other places. <laughs> oh, God. Um, there's, the there's a few other places as well. Um, and <laughs> you know what? You probably heard me on the radio at some point in the last two weeks because I think I've been on, like, every station. So. Sure. Humble break. Oh, thanks, <laughs> thanks, Nate, for uh, yeah. for jumping on Did with you us. Dislocate Joe? your shoulder oh. to patting yourself on the back. <laughs> <of my shoulder>. <laughs> <laughs> no. It was funny. So I went on I went on NPR earlier this week, and I didn't tell my dad or whatever. He calls me up afterwards. He was like, "I heard you on the radio driving back on NPR." <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I didn't know they let you on. They let you on there for sports. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know NPR but did anything. Yeah. I didn't either. Sports. That's it. It. it was nice. It was really yeah. cool. I gotta yeah, go. Uh, so. Yeah. Oh. oh, and you can follow me on Twitter at Gopher State as well. Sure. Joe, anything you'd uh, you'd like to plug before we uh, we get out, or they close up on? Please us? follow Hockey Wilderness on Facebook and comment on their <laughs> articles. Correct, yes, because yes. that's not you know that doesn't a happen firestorm right. that I like to read all the time. <laughs> uh, I'm looking forward to the 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 Frozen Four and all the out of town writers uh, complaining about the weather because they're just dandy to be in town. <laughs> um, all right, it's the same thing as the uh, the Super Thank Bowl, you. you know. I mean, sorry, the the super. Superb owl. Yeah, the superb <laughs> owl. Superb owl. Yeah. Look, the big game. The North. Look, we can't yes. hold it in Tampa every year, but if we did, I would be very happy. Yeah, I'm sure you would. Um, I'd be no, down. but uh, hockeywilderness.com is going to be uh, chronicling every game leading up and into the postseason. Sure. And, uh, you know, I, I wrote a big old article that I got overshadowed by Greenway's uh, <laughs> uh, signing about Jason Zucker and his kind of his road to 30 goals and how he's kind of become a, a wild star. So go click that. That was. Uh, a good read and um, uh, fun to write about too. So, uh, but yeah, follow me on uh, on Twitter at Joe Boo number fifteen and uh, at Hockey Wilderness. Well, thanks to thanks to Nate and Joe. Thanks to Tom for producing. Although John Bonus really had to save his bacon. <laughs> yeah. on this one. Are, you, are you supposed to uh, yeah. plug in the, yeah. the board to I, the computer? Is that that usually that helps. I think. Uh, yeah. Tom. Yeah. He, he gets an executive producer credit for this episode. He does. Yeah, yes. he does. Yeah. yeah. Tom Schreier pretty much runs ZoneCoverage.com, which is the the entity that now hosts this otherwise fine podcast. Yes. Uh, and he will tell you, please click on ZoneCoverage.com lot. every day. Tell your friends. <laughs> Uh, share it. A good click on our article. site, comment on Bully's Facebook. Yes, yes. That's share, share it. <laughs> share it on social media. <laughs> Tom is also on Twitter at tschreier3. Uh, he uh, does sometimes cover the Wolves and the the Twins. He's uh, yeah. he's the uh, the sub in. So I have to do yeah. opening day. Which oh. is he great. stays far away from the Wild, which is probably a yeah. smart idea on his yeah. part. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, thanks to Tom for uh, getting the uh, the real equipment in here and. Uh, when it's plugged in, it's great. Yeah, yeah. it's it's awesome. Funny how that works. But, uh, you can follow Ben and I on Twitter at Ben Remington at Giles Farrell. We have hot jersey takes all the time, yes. so you can look forward to that. Uh, this podcast has a Twitter account at JTG Wild Podcast. Uh, like I said, we're on Zone Coverage at Zone Coverage MN on the the Twitter sphere. Uh, do follow that account as well. We had some fun giveaways, like uh, tickets to Wolves game recently. Yeah. So yeah, from Ben Panel, it's great. We uh, we loved. Uh, we try to give away some stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, follow this podcast on SoundCloud, iTunes, uh, iHeartRadio, Spotify, blah blah blah. <laughs> uh, please give us an I iTunes rating. We are an otherwise fine podcast. So uh, again, thanks to uh, Nate Wells, Joe Bully, uh, for joining us here at the viewing party. Thanks to Tom Schreier for producing. And for Ben and myself, we will catch you again next week at the conclusion of the NHL regular season. <laughs> Later. It's not resiliency. You're making it sound like we're good. That's all. I'm done. <laughs>